Hello everybody and welcome to the video that has taken an ungodly amount of time to follow up from the last one and why is that? Well the wiring loom which is a piece of shit, this is a piece of shit, the wiring loom that came from the breakers yard in the UK is a piece of shit and uh, we were told we were getting the best wiring loom, was beautiful like beautiful loom they're taking it out of a car and you know this that and the other and you know it was going to be great and nothing prepared me for what was to come so what was to come was the first uh, i suppose disaster was wiring loom leaving scotland heading for ireland made it to my local post office uh, just a mile away from where i live and couldn't get scanned out because the paperwork was wrong for the customs and was a return to sender job and it took five and a half weeks for it to make it from the post office here in my local town back to scotland it eventually arrived back there and we paid it we paid a decent amount of money for this this loom okay um so we said right well we're not going to chance the mail again so we're going to get just going to get it picked up by courier which cost a few quid so we did that we said at least you know if we do that we'll have it in time and uh, it got picked up and lo and behold no sign of it and customs paperwork was wrong again so it turns out the breakers yard in scotland that sent it out just haven't had any experience in shipping to southern ireland since brexit and for any of you that um that understand the, you know the saga that's behind all of this paperwork um it's 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 a fucking it's a complete shit show now the bigger companies like burton graham good you know all the people that are relying on export and um, they have it down to a fine art you know we get something from burton and we have it here you know in two days it's great no problem but when you're whatever paperwork these guys have to fill out it's not that much it's not that many details that's needed but apparently on their end it's a pain in the ass and it just wasn't done properly so the loom came and when the loom came i was delighted it was like eight or nine weeks or something like that the loom finally showed up and i opened the box to pull it out to lay it out in the ground and have a look at it and to say i was um pissed off was an understatement um, you'll see on the next clip how um you, why i was so pissed off if it's it's just <laughs> it was a disaster but anyway i'll let the video unfold you'll see what i'm talking about and you'll see um you'll get to see it i'll be back again in a i'll be back again in a bit and you'll we'll we'll talk about what you've just watched so on with the video now this should be a fuse box now some of you may be looking at this going yeah but like that's that's okay you know it, it'll just it'll just push in and it'll it'll be this and it'll be that maybe maybe but it's too much to chance um like this just this thing's bent you know out of shape wires half cracked in it and it's just nah. it just screams something's going to go wrong with it then down down here we've got some sort of an alarm with no name no nothing on it 20 odd fucking black cables and it going all over the place that's going to cause it that's you know that's heading over to the ignition that's definitely going to cause trouble um and as we're going back along here i mean like that's just shit of the highest degree that's all rotten you know like none of those are going to be making any form of proper connection anyway so why would i want to put that into it when the wiring loom that's coming out of it is so so good it's just the wrong length so if we look at its original fuse box you will see you know all those things i was showing you a while ago they do just click in but are you going to click them into the right place did they click in properly and like as i said driving down the road you know are one of those fuses going to become loose potentially um so here is all the wires that are going to everything that we need we'll say under the bonnet on the left hand drive one and here's everything we need 
right and right and like i said there's only one wire of a difference in in different color or one wire extra so we'll figure that one out that won't be a problem um and it just means that all the stuff that i need is on the correct side and that's obviously the the passenger side and stuff there then but yeah it's just a mess really and it's a shame because we're in we're in big money in for the snow between paying stupid money for um import charges paying stupid money for couriers and paying a lot of money for the loom itself in the first place anyway so but look it's all a learning curve as i said i've spoken to a good few people that have done this before but i've never spoken to two uh, person that's done two of them before maybe you're out there if you are i'm sure you had a right hand drive sierra next to you when you were doing it because ultimately the only way to do one of these conversions is have a right hand drive one next to you now we did get that's a four wheel drive one that is different uh not a bad loom but different again so yeah anyway that's where we are with it right fellas so you have seen that um see what i mean fuse box destroyed and like i think i made the right call by not fitting it because i think it would have been more hassle than it's worth so what i proceeded to do and i didn't film it purely because my biggest thing is i don't time is the biggest problem for me this is a side project that i'm lucky if i get six to eight hours a week to work on and when i'm doing it i really just want to tear into it and sometimes i've done like in the past i've forgotten to record bits and pieces and i'm sorry it, i can't um you know i have to make good use of the time when when i get the time to do it so sometimes obviously i forget to record the procedure but what i what i ended up doing and what i had to do with the wiring loom was i cut the front section which was the right hand drive section um, and I soldered it into the left hand, we used the left hand drive fuse box and soldered it into the left hand drive loom and continued that process throughout the car then. Um, so the next clip you'll see is just me running over the um, everything that's under the bonnet from the right hand drive loom into the left hand drive loom. So, right. On with it. Now, I've joined in my joined in my loom. Obviously, forgot to feed this, feed all the cabling through this first. So I must pull pull the cables back out, or all the wiring loom back out of the car because this must get bolted in and it goes in through it and whatever. Anyway, it doesn't matter. That can be done afterwards. So the wiring loom is now sorted. Everything is plugged into its relevant um spot i was saying there was 25 wires on the loom that we got and 24 on the one that um that was in the car and the difference was there was one extra wire on the right hand drive loom that was going into um that would have been going into the car that would have had this on it uh, where is this? Oh, this it's actually this wire here so this blue wire and that's not in um that's not in the the left left hand drive wiring room so if it's not in the left hand drive wiring room then it's fine because we're you know we're at the, we're we're still using essentially the wiring of that but using the length of the cable of the right hand drive one so i'm not i'm not bothered that that's not um connected everything else was fine all made sense great um so on the inside obviously you know i must refeed that so that's fine now all i have to do is uh join this is where i cut and that is in the loom here as well so right hand side so yep so basically make a, a joint from that into where i cut it in the loom here and then you'll see over there, there's, a, there's um, two pieces cut there as well. Must make um, a connection from that into the loom here. And that's it, basically, I think. Just a couple of other small bits and pieces, just plugins and stuff. I may have to make extensions on those. Um, I may not, where's this left-hand side? 
So yeah, so that's basically all the cabling that's going to go into that one. Look, it's it's no big deal. So just for a crack, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, about seventeen, seventeen wires. And I think the easiest thing to do is just like I did with the uh, under the bonnet. It's take my time. It took fucking ages to solder them because it just did rather than just you know basically putting joiners on them and stuff like that but at least when they're soldered it's done properly and you know there'll be no problem with continuity or anything like that afterwards so yeah we're nearly there we're getting there and once those are joined and everything is laid and sat in its place then i can start refitting the interior back together and just start building it back out and we'll be a-okay now here we are so all the wiring behind the dash is done. I'm just gonna talk you through it. Okay, so crossovers made. Now what I did was I opened the shit loom and I used the exact color wire that I needed to extend over. So the color of the wires is actually right. The gauge of the wire is right. And I have a small bit of tidying up to do over there and I have about three wires left to connect over there. And I have, here this is just central locking and um, uh, electric windows the reason why they're disconnected is when i when i put in the battery and connected everything just to see would it work i put the key in the door just to make sure the central locking was working and the central locking has decided to go apeshit so that's most likely because of a stuck um, actuator or something like that or a stuck lock so just need to have a look at that and see um, however when you turn the key and a battery is connected everything works lights work indicators work windows work like i said central locking we can sort that uh blower works wipers work uh they didn't because the linkage um the linkage we got and the wiper motor for the right and drive one um was seized so we had to chop and change and anyway sorted it so everything body wise now works as regards electrics and it's now a case of me, sorry, I'm crudely holding this here now. Um, it's now a case of, I wanted to make sure everything was 100%. Connected this, uh, I have the gearbox in, I have the starter motor in, and the starter's firing as well, so that's good. So the engine's turning over, I just haven't got the fuel and, th and stuff connected yet. So that's going to be on the next video just uh, putting in the gearbox and putting on the exhaust and stuff like that, that's done. And that'll be out on video within the next couple of days because I have all the footage shot for that. Um, we're actually have a good bit of work done otherwise. The Samco hoses are in, the car is actually probably about an hour away from being started as in firing, firing it up and stuff. So that's for the next video, but I just wanted to cover the wiring loom. But I also just wanted to, to explain to you guys as well that, you know, this is a side project. It is, I, I'm like, I have a massive amount of obligations in my kind of everyday life, which does take a lot of time. And this is a hobby. And unfortunately, that's why the videos weren't as regular, coupled with waiting for eight or nine weeks of, uh, you know of the wiring loom to show up so just bear with us i appreciate the support i appreciate the love um you know and yeah cool thank you thanks for watching and we'll have a, another video out again literally in a few days time i just want to get this one out and and get the videos back rolling again and we're very close we're very close to it being completed so yeah fingers crossed okay thanks for watching guys talk to you all very, very soon.